you describe your gay pride as a family event? Many of you may have noticed the recent push to sexualize children in the Western world. Some of you may have tried to ignore it. You can no longer ignore this. The sexualization of the most innocent is here. Some of you may laugh and say, well, I don't see this happening. That seems to be the argument for almost everything. Well, I don't see it happening. Let me show you. You already saw those clips, but <laughs> I don't see this happening. Let me show you. Article after article is being published. Now, this first came to the attention of political circles when in 2015, an article titled, I'm a pedophile, but not a monster, was published by the liberal website Salon.com, written by a so-called virtuous pedophile named Todd Nickerson. Within the article, Nickerson describes how he just so happened to discover that he was attracted to little girls while babysitting one of them and then trying to justify his attraction to children by claiming it is simply another sexual orientation and that he is the true victim. Because he can never truly express his love to these children. But he would never hurt them, right? He's just a victim that wants to have sex with small children really bad. But doesn't, so therefore he's a hero. Luckily, nearly everyone on the right side of politics, many on the anti-SJW side of the left, and even most normal people saw this and the slew of articles that followed uh, for what they truly were, an attempt to begin normalizing pedophilia through sympathy and playing the victim, all leading to the general public accepting pedophilia as a perfectly normal sexual orientation and children as sexual beings who are not harmed with sex with a supposed experienced adult. Now, some may think of this as just the next step in the sexual degeneracy that's been plaguing the Western world. And I'll put on some facts to prove that this is actually happening. So there's no, well, I just don't see it happening. Well, you're not paying attention. That's the big problem. Nobody seems to be paying attention. I've seen several, these, these pushes seem to come in waves. And recently I, I saw another wave and I think these waves are going to get more and more intense until the general public accepts them, and I don't think we realize how quickly this is going to happen. So, we've accepted every form of sexual deviancy. This is just the next logical step. But what if I told you, from jump, this was the plan? That this was a want, this was a desire? Well, maybe you just don't see that. You want me to prove it, and I can. But to prove it to you, I have to take you back to the beginning. To the beginning of the whole sexual revolution. I have to take you back to Kinsey. Many may look back to the 1940s and 50s as the golden age of America and virtually every aspect from economics, military power, and of course morality. Though few tend to realize that it was during this time that the seeds of the sexual revolution were planted. Now one could go as far back to the enlightenment and its swapping of God for logic and reason, but for this specific revolution that we're talking about, we're going to stay right in the 1940s and 50s. During this time, more and more academics and media talking heads began to criticize what they called arcane laws on sexuality that um, were in place in the United States. And of course, many of these laws were ridiculous, and um, they were, quite frankly, unenforceable. So this gave the critics the ammunition they needed to begin chipping away at America's morals on sexual conduct. Chief among these critics was the man who many claim to not only be the first sexologist, which is probably arguably untrue, but the architect of the sexual revolution, Alfred Kinsey. 
Kinsey and those who worked with him are in large part responsible for the modern West's ideas on sexuality and what is and what is not taboo. What's left to be taboo? Well, we've already gone over that. Meaning to many that he is a hero who threw off the shackles of Christian repression towards sexual expression. This guy even has a movie about him where he looks pretty sympathetic. But maybe you're thinking, I've never heard of this guy, or I barely hear about this guy. And let me tell you, there is a very, very good reason for that. Remember in school, where your liberal teacher would get a big smirk on his face when he was about to talk about bad stuff that uh, Columbus or George Washington did, even though everybody and their mother already knew about it? Well, that's basically what I'm about to do with Kinsey. Because Kinsey, the guy who spoke before several Western governments and wrote two best-selling books that shaped how we look at sexuality, supported seeing children as sexual beings. Kinsey and his staff even worked with active pedophiles. That's right, everyone. The champion of sexual freedom knowingly worked with active child molesters for what he and those who came after him claimed to be scientific reasons. Professor Alfred Kinsey was the father of the sexual revolution. From 1948 to 1956, he traveled the world, advising governments how to modernize antiquated sex laws. From Britain, where he advised the Wolfenden Committee on Homosexuality, to Europe and America, his advice was key to updating sexual attitudes. Now, Kinsey really made his mark through his academic work and in the world of higher education, um, which helped shape it to begin teaching students his supposedly scientific views on sexuality. Kinsey would write and publish two best-selling books with the help of his loyal staff. First, The Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, and then sexual behavior in the human female a few years later. When the book came out, it simply hit America. It was compared to the atom bomb. Um, people were rushing out to buy it. It sold something like 300,000 copies for a, a book almost twice as expensive as, as the ordinary book and certainly five times as fat. All the papers had it either in the front pages or very, very big in the in the middle pages, all the magazines, Lifetime, had six or seven page spreads about him. The first thing we need to look at when looking at Kinsey's two books is the research that went into both of them. Kinsey makes some pretty outrageous claims, uh, especially for the 1940s and 50s, saying that 30 to 45 percent of men had had affairs, 85 percent of men had sex prior to marriage, 70 percent of men slept with prostitutes, 37 percent of men engaged in homosexual behavior, he makes other disturbing claims, such as 10% of men had sex with animals, and 3.6% of the women had as well. That number rose to between 40 to 50% based on proximity to farms. Was he right? No. His research was bunk. What Kinsey would do is he would go to sex criminals, prostitutes, things of that nature. He would go into prisons overuse those kind of people in his statistics and make it look as if the American public was much more sexually deviant than they actually were. And he claimed this is science. People still claim Alfred Kinsey's research is valid. This isn't science. This is active propaganda. This is an active attempt to try and demoralize the United States in terms of sexual decency. This isn't science, this is sick. But there was a dark side to the research. One chapter in the book dealt with the previously unresearched subject of child sexuality. It's little known that to get this information, Kinsey cultivated relationships with habitual child molesters. At the beginning of his research, uh, Kinsey saw pedophilia as really beyond the pale. As he collected more and more data, and as he, uh, again, hoped to promote more and more tolerance, he has a hard time maintaining moral boundaries. Now, the main pedophile Kinsey got a lot of his research from <clears throat> was actually recommended to him by his mentor. Um, it was a man by the name of Rex King. And as we're going to see, Rex King had a 
body count in terms of children in the hundreds, over a hundred. He there are some people who claim he had six hundred children. You're never going to find a more mon monstrous person than Rex King. He's vile. He, it's the only thing. He is a vile animal, a monster. He, the things he does is inhuman, or are inhuman. Um, he was, of course, not the only pedophile that um, Kinsey was involved with. Um, we'll see if maybe two more down the road um, in this video. And um, he encouraged, there were dozens, dozens of others who would write in to him about their own experience with um, raping children. Some people try and put it in more soft terms. Having sex with children. You don't have sex with a kid, you rape them. You can't have sex with a child. It's not possible. They can't consent. We need to call this what it is. Rex King could have been turned in by Kinsey. He was still active well into Kinsey's interactions with him and well after that. How many children did this man violate just so Kinsey could say, Well, it would be immoral to turn him in now. How many children were raped so Alfred Kinsey could get his so-called scientific research? In June 1944, Alfred Kinsey left Indiana on an 1,800-mile trek across the southwestern United States. He was going to a clandestine meeting with a man who was to become his prime source of information about child sexuality. He was interested in having sex with men, women, and children, and animals. And he just was curious to see what would happen. His first sexual contact was overt intercourse with his grandmother. His, um, he had looked up his family tree. There were 30, uh, I forget how many, 33 or 38 members. He had had almost all of them. Um, he had had intercourse with hundreds upon hundreds of males and females of every conceivable age. My memory is that it exceeded 600 for both boys and girls, and we haven't yet got to maturity. The man was a U.S. government land examiner called Rex King. To protect him, Kinsey gave him the code name Mr. Green. His job took him across Arizona and New Mexico, trips he used to prey on children. He molested at least 800 boys and girls, recording the details in explicit handwritten diaries. So as you can see, um, Rex King's exact number of victims um, is a bit contested. It seems to sit around between six to 800 uh, children though, as well as, you know, he supposedly had every member of his family. You already heard his first sexual encounter was with his grandmother. This guy is as sick as they come and we already discussed Kinsey's mentor um, Dickinson was actually the one who first found Rex King and was the one who taught him to scientifically in quotation marks um, take down how he raped these children and um, measure things out, how long things took, what the children did in response. Kinsey's um, cohorts who are still alive say, well, they couldn't have stopped him from being a pedophile anyway. We both know that's a lie. Experimented with baby. Penis 1.7 inches by three inches. Stiff immediately. Throbs in 3.5 minutes. Green's diaries were a highly incriminating record of 20 years of sexual abuse. I congratulate you on the research spirit which has led you to collect data over these many years. So Alfred got his research, Rex King continued to molest children, and his rapes were included in a scientific work was claimed to be science. And no one in the 1950s questioned this. They could go around, run around, lynching random black people for looking saucy at their mistress or something. But this goes on right in front of them. This guy lays this out. No one bothered to ask where this had come from. 
child orgasms and like having sex with a kid. Where did he get this information? No one seemed to care. Or at the very least, anyone who did care didn't have the media voice to get their concerns out there. This was all hushed up. Yeah, and as we move forward, you're going to see a very close associate of Alfred Kinsey's, Clarence Tripp, who actively defends Green's actions, and his, his descriptions are outright sociopathic. They, they have no empathy for the children that this happened to. And uh, hopefully I'll have an interview with um, a police officer later in this video for you. But... When pedophiles get caught, they rarely ever feel embarrassed. The only time you'll ever embarrass them is if you get them in front of the entire nation, like on To Catch a Predator. But people like Clarence Tripp, they make excuses. They say, oh, well, the children loved it, and they, they had a great time. But there's evidence that obviously contradicts that. Clarence Tripp may very well be a pedophile himself, the way he describes this. Just listen to this. Green was actually extremely conservative in all kinds of ways, and we know that for sure, because he had, um, you know, you can get into trouble in a flash if you have any kind of, uh, uh, even uh, tickling, any kind of sexual contact whatsoever um, with the child, because all you need is one whimper out of the child. You don't even need a formal charge to put you in the jailhouse. Well, here's this man with hundreds of contacts. There was never a charge against him. He was never arrested for anything. All the children thought he was wonderful. Uh, all the mothers thought he was wonderful. Uh, there are two, I suppose, lest uh, you get contradicted, there are two instances in which a young boy or girl, a girl, I guess it was, I don't remember, um, didn't complain, they agreed to the sexual contact, but then they found it very painful and yelled out when it actually took place. This was because they were very young and had small genitalia, and Green was a grown man with enormous genitalia, and there was a fit problem. Now I am going to play for you a reading right out of Kinsey's book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. You can find this right in chapter five if you want to go look for yourself. Extreme tension with violent convulsion, often involving the sudden heaving and jerking of the whole body, groaning, sobbing, or more violent cries, sometimes with an abundance of tears, especially among younger children. Does that sound like the children were enjoying that? To me, it sounds like they were in pain, crying, and trying to get away from Green. You can read other excerpts like this as well. In fact, you can go and find an excerpt of or the entire PDF of Chapter 5 online. Let me read this for you. Our several thousand histories have included considerable detail on the nature of orgasm and these data, together with the records supplied by some older subjects who have had sexual contacts with younger boys, provide material for describing the different sorts of reactions which may occur. Kinsey admits blatantly where he got this information and nothing happened to him. He was working with pedophiles. He knew what they were doing. He didn't turn them in. His colleagues admit to what they were doing was illegal. Not turning these people in, working with them. And it only gets worse from here. I've mentioned before that Kinsey, um, encourage this behavior. And what we're about to see is who he encouraged this from. And I want you to keep in mind, this is the architect of the sex revolution, who is hailed as a hero. Remember that. Not all of the pedophile information arriving at the Kinsey Institute in Indiana came from within America. There is a man in Germany he was a pedophile and he wrote Kinsey and he was interested in information about pedophilia and he offered his own case history. The pedophile was Dr. Fritz von Baljusek, a former senior Nazi party official. 
Before the war, he had been a stormtrooper. During the war, he had commanded a ghetto in an occupied Polish town. During all this time, and in the years that followed, he sexually abused hundreds of pre-adolescent girls and boys. He recorded the details in pseudo-scientific diaries in which he claimed to have masturbated and penetrated the children to assist their sexual development. But as we move on with this one, there's actual evidence that Kinsey encouraged this man to go out and rape children. And this pedophile will even go on to say that he did it to impress Kinsey. Which, of course, if you're saying you're doing it for science, then of course you're encouraging this behavior even more. And the argument that, oh, we couldn't stop him, you could turn them into the police. The Kinsey Institute says, well, that would be immoral to do that. This is all hushed up. It's supposed to be patient-client privilege they basically put out. To say that it's immoral to stop a man from raping children is insane. This is like me using what Ted Bundy did for science. And claiming, when, when people come to me and be like, he, he raped hundreds of women, how could you let this go? And just be like, it was for science. It doesn't add up, and we all know it. But at von Balyasek's trial, an exchange between the judge and the paedophile seemed to suggest otherwise. The judge said, I had the impression that you got to the children in order to impress Kinsey and to deliver him material. And von Balyasek replied, Kinsey himself asked me for that. If the judge's impression was correct, and if von Balyasek was telling the truth, it would be evidence of Kinsey's involvement in ongoing child sexual abuse. This would also make a lot of sense in terms of why the Institute is so confidential and protective of their records. You have this little chuckle box freak of a man who just laughs off all the abuse they let go, and he's like, we'll destroy this information before we let governments in here. The reason for that could be because they'll all go to prison for encouraging rape and, that, and, the, and the rape of children. What else were they doing in here? What else happened? I mean, this is more than enough. But Now, you've seen all of what Kinsey has done. And um, now I'd like to um, play for you an interview between myself and a police officer. Um, I'm not going to give out my name or the officer's name. I, I would just ask you to trust me on this. And if you don't, I completely understand why you wouldn't. Um, but I'm going to ask him what it was like arresting pedophiles and interacting with them and what their excuse, their response was in the case of being caught red-handed. So what year did you become a police officer? 1976. 1976, and you were a cop for 34 years? Yes, I was. Now, when you guys had to interact with pedophiles, what was their reaction upon getting caught? Almost no reaction. They never felt um, the slightest bit of remorse, There's no guilt. I never saw them embarrassed. Um, it always seemed like they felt that they had every right in the world to do what they were doing, and it was nothing wrong with it. It was a very surprising reaction, which I never really got used to. Did, like, when they say on um, they had every white right in the world, do they mean, like, the children, did they ever make excuses like the children enjoyed it or something like that? I never heard excuses like that, but I think they felt that what they felt was a natural feeling and that uh, no one had any right to condemn them for what they were doing because it's what they felt they wanted to do, or were driven to do. Were they forthcoming with what they did, or...? Um, some were, some were, uh... I never saw any of them deny it, but... they didn't always admit to it, but, uh... never any, uh... you know, uh... So, after we've heard this interview, it becomes apparent that Clarence Tripp's um, interview with the documentary Kinsey's Pedophiles makes it even more eerie because his response was utterly devoid of any empathy. It was all excuses. And perhaps we can't say that they thought they had a right to do this, but 
These pedophiles almost think they had a mission to. A just reason. They were doing this for science. Both, um, the German, whose name escapes me, the Nazi guy, and Rex King, both religiously documented what they were doing to these children. And it becomes very eerie as you look at this and how a lot of Kinsey's close friends and staff respond to these questions. They themselves have no empathy for what happened to these kids. There's no empathy in any of this. This is an institute of sociopaths, of uncaring, unfeeling men. It's, it's very strange. But after we've looked at the um, interview with the police officer, and after we've heard the excuses of men like Clarence Tripp, who claimed that people who were molested by Rex King loved it, I've already showed you evidence that they did not, and they were obviously raped and did not enjoy it. I'm going to show you what happens as these children grow up. We have a woman by the name of Jerry. I don't freaking know her name. Give me a second. Oh, God, she breaks my heart. Esther White. We have a woman by the name of Esther White who whose father molested her, well first her grandfather, then her own father, molested her when she was just a child, um, back in the 1950s and 60s. And in this documentary, um, they don't go as far into it as um, Kinsey's, uh, Kinsey Syndrome, I believe it's called. In this documentary, um, they just claim that her father wrote into Alfred Kinsey, I believe in Kinsey Syndrome, they claim that he actually met and had a meeting with Alfred Kinsey and discussed um, the relationship he had with his daughter. Again, Kinsey does not turn a man who was actively molesting his daughter in, but she claims that he had a stopwatch, um, which is what Kinsey had the pedophiles do. He wrote down how long things took and just all that sickness. I'm going to show you the effect it has had on her exactly what happened to her as she describes her own story so my school was going to have a little operetta when i got on stage i was so scared because i knew what was going to happen on the way home my father put me in the back seat and of course continued to sexually abuse me but i looked out the back window and there was a, a gorgeous beautiful moon and stars. And it's very difficult to say. I'm sorry. It was a very painful memory to remember. But I was crying so hard that the tears were running into my eye, out of my eyes and down into my ears. And I was crying and my sinuses were so filled up I couldn't breathe. And my ears were filling up with water. I and I just had a fear, I'm, I'm going to die. The only um, thing I can come up with after listening to that is deliver us from evil. This is the reality um, that we're facing, not, oh, they loved him, the parents loved him, 
Oh, Rex King was so great. Children can benefit from having sexual relations. Normalizing sex with children is... I hope you realize at this point, at the root of what Kinsey was, was teaching, it, you can't get away from it. This, there's an entire chapter in both of his books. In the second one, Sexual Behavior and the Human Female, he states that it is odd that a child would not like its genitals touched except for the culture in which it grew up in. He thinks that children being molested and not liking it is because of the culture. Utterly sickening. I think it's very interesting. Um, Alfred Kinsey, he, when he was young, he was um, in a family that was very religious and um, <clears throat> had very few friends because of how strict they were. And when he got into his 20s, it's described as he turned with fury on religion and became an atheist, of course. And it um, seems like ever since then he was trying to destroy every Christian value on sex that society held. And I've heard it described as atheists become their own god. <coughs> and God created the world in his image. Alfred Kinsey has certainly created the world in his own image. Today would be a sexual paradise for Alfred Kinsey. He'd love it. What is it? Massive STD spikes. Barely anyone abstains before marriage. It's exactly what he wanted. But I want to show you the result of all this, of what happened to him through this, the dark path he took. There's more that you can look up for yourself, but I think this will drive it home, the path that he took and where it brought him. A strong association developed uh, in him that in order to have sexual pleasure, he also had to pay for it in pain. Kinsey, on one occasion, circumcised himself with a pocket knife without uh, anesthesia or anything else. Uh, that, to me, is an act of a desperate man. It's, a, it's an act of, an, of a person whose private boundaries are starting to erode. Therefore, the title of this episode, Impotence Out of Erotomania. Alfred Kinsey became so obsessed with sex, became so involved with it, and he had his staff experiment on each other, he did all kinds of disturbing things, and it eventually led him to the point where normal sex or even trying to pleasure himself wasn't enough. I read, um, read an article. Well, actually, no, I heard it, I think, from Common Filth back in the day. He read an article saying, The future of American pornography is pain, which brings us back to this is the world Kinsey's created. We're going down the exact same path he did. We've bought into all his teachings, whether we like to admit it or not. <clears throat> and those teachings have led us here. To where we see article after article being published, arguing that pedophiles are not a problem. They're misunderstood. They're just such poor, innocent people. They want to have sex with children. No matter the amount of propaganda, always keep that in your head. These people are sick. They want to have sex with your kids. This isn't me being paranoid. And don't feel bad for them. They are not the victim. These children. That old lady you heard talking was the freaking victim. Not a pedophile. Not somebody so disturbed, so sick, so monstrous, that they would want to violate the most innocent form of a human being. With that, I'm going to leave you um, with a few clips of Kinsey's intentions and sayings just to drive home the point. In his final years, Kinsey would testify before legislatures and courts that pedophilia was a less dangerous problem than public intolerance of it. Based on Kinsey's writings, he approved fully and wholly of adult-child sexual interactions, what he called 
play or interactions. Not only that, he recommended that uh, adults uh, could uh, effectively aid children in, uh, in better sexual lives by giving them, quote unquote, orgasms at a very early age. Without help from more experienced persons, many pre-adolescents take a good many years to discover masturbatory techniques that are sexually effective. It is probable that half or more of the boys in an uninhibited society could reach climax by the time they were three or four years of age. And with that, the last, got the last, the first episode of Long Way Down is done. I did it. I made a video about Alfred Kinsey and how freaking sick he was. Why I'm doing this? I don't know. I found out about Kinsey a while ago. And um, I think to understand and really tackle a problem, you need to know its source. You need to know its origin. And um, Kinsey's the origin for this. I'm just gonna leave this um, video of a patent tank, the coolest American tank ever made. I'm not saying the best, but it's the freaking coolest American tank ever made. Just rolling around the background, but um, yeah, I'm I, I like I'm good with kids actually. I'm good with them, but you know, I'm not gonna go out of my way to be like, ah, oh, cool children. Like if they're like my family, my cousin has two kids, and they're great whenever they come over, and um. I like hanging out with them, they're like one and three years old, but um, I just feel like this is a calling for me, and I <laughs> hate it. If you could hear in my voice, this is physically painful for me to do. I hate this. Oh my god, I hate this. These people are the sickest creatures you could ever imagine. Oh my god, but <clears throat> I'm going to tell you. The 17 people who watch this, I'm going to tell you, right off the bat, what this needs to be. If you're going to win, if you're going to beat this pedophilic push in our culture, first thing it needs to be is Christian. You need Jesus. I know a lot of people are going to like to hear that, but you need Jesus. If the house isn't built in God, it's you might as well not even build it. It's going to collapse. You need a firm foundation. The foundation that doesn't move. Steady and unchanging. You need Christ. If the movement, if this movement to push back against pedophilia isn't at its core Christian, it's going to fail. That's it. You're done. Second thing it needs to be, it needs to be right wing. I'm sorry. You're pansy, fairy Mary, hickory dickory liberalism isn't going to do this. You're like, um, Sargon of Akkad made a good video on, uh, some pedophile stuff that goes on, but, um, People like him, people like Milo, they're not going to win. These classical liberals, these pseudo-leftists who claim to be right-wing, they're not going to win. You can be anything from... Oh God, I'll accept you if you're a Stephen Crowder conservative and then write about anything else than that. I don't give a crap if you're freaking... Okay, I'm going to watch what I say. <laughs> Just, it needs to be on the right side of politics... And above all, it needs to be Christian. Anything else is going to fail. You don't like that? You don't have to watch. You can watch. I don't care if you do, but that's what this needs to be. Just going to say that right off the bat. <clears throat> and with that, we're done. We're going to see more pushing for pedophilia and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave links in the description down below so you can uh, find the sources I used. I'll leave the two documentaries and the chapter from Kinsey's book I found. Um, but what I'm going to leave above that is some fun stuff for you to watch. I'm going to leave some stuff that I like to watch to be fun. Because this sucks. If you have depression, don't keep watching this. This is sick. Don't do that. You're going to kill yourself. Don't do it. Made in the image and likeness of God. So... <clears throat> Never give in to these freaking pedophiles. Never let them play the victim. They're not victims. They're sick. Oh, that's why I'm the victim. No, you're not. You're disgusting. Get away from me. You sickened me. That's how we gotta be. Alright. Go watch some fun stuff. Try and get this out of your mind a little bit. 
keep fighting the good fight. Maybe I'll make another episode. I think I'll make it. If I'm going to make another episode, the next one's going to be on John Money. Show me the money! But, um... Yeah, it's not going to come out quick, that's for sure. Because screw this, man. This sucks. <laughs> Alright. God bless y'all. I'm out.